Linsanity, a craze that swept the NBA unlike any other. One point guard, one dream, but the entire world was watching. At the peak of Linsanity, it seemed like Jeremy Lin could do no wrong. Lin puts it up. Bang! Jeremy Lin from downtown! He was that guy. And to be amazingly honest, he was that good. Look, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Lin was the best player in the NBA, but his name was just as big as some of those who were. The Jeremy Lin hype, the Lin Sanity hype was real. It was so real that I thought there was a chance, a small chance, maybe a microscopic chance, that when James Harden and Jeremy Lin teamed up in Houston, the beard would take a back seat and let Jeremy Lin take over. But of course, Jeremy Lin, Lin Sanity, just like every other success, there's a story. There's a story behind what Jeremy Lin had to go through to get to where he was, to where he is today. Even though Lin Sanity may have looked like an overnight success, you don't get that good by chance. Jeremy Lin played his college basketball at Harvard. Yeah, Harvard. Despite averaging 16 and 18 points his junior and senior season, he went undrafted in the 2010 NBA draft. As a kid, you could say Jeremy Lin loved to play basketball. You could say that was his passion. Both of Lin's parents, they weren't very tall. And Jeremy Lin, as a freshman in high school, he was only five foot three. And the story could have stopped right there, but it didn't. Jeremy Lin had a drive, an aggressiveness, and a passion that showed his coaches that he was no joke. He was the real deal. Lin's high school coach said there were only two things that Lin cared about, and that was making plays and winning games. Lin had an uncanny ability to step up and rise to the occasion when the lights were the brightest. Now keep in mind, this is a five foot three freshman. This same five foot three freshman would get called up to varsity for their team's playoff run. By Lin's senior year, he had grown physically to match the aggressiveness and maturity that this guy was already balling with. He was six foot two, now 180 pounds. He took his team, he took his high school team to a state championship where they would pull off the biggest of upsets. But there were no offers, not one. Shocking, right? Look, if you ask me, if you're a five foot three freshman and you're playing varsity basketball and you grow, you grow, to over six foot, I already know you're good enough. I already know you're a hooper. I already know you have the talent to play at the next level. No questions asked. If you were talented at 5'3", why wouldn't you be at six foot plus? Oh yeah, and then you add in the fact that Lynn had just led his team to a state championship and you're telling me he's still not good enough? The one very unfortunate thing with recruiting is it's a very flawed process. I can't tell you how many guys I've seen good enough to play D1, good enough to play at the next level, just not get any looks. Be it because they were misused in high school or they simply didn't get the opportunity or the hype. But in this situation, I think it was much more deep than just opportunity or just hype. And Jeremy Lin, I think he'd agree with me. The only schools that were offering Lin guaranteed roster spots were Ivy League schools. So he ended up at Harvard. The lack of interest, it was disappointing. But that didn't stop Jeremy Lin. By his sophomore season, he was already averaging 12.6 points and he would be named to the Ivy League's all-conference second team. The next year, he showed he was more than capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the nation's top programs and recruits. Jeremy Lin, all-conference. But it didn't stop there. When Harvard knocked off crosstown rival Boston College, it got real. For Lin's senior season, the awards just kept coming. The season was a record-setting one for both Lin and for his team. They took the school record for wins, and Lin? Lin would be all over Ivy League record books. During the 2010 draft combine, Lin would have some of the top metrics for speed and agility, alongside John Wall. You may have heard of him. Houston's general manager, Daryl Morey, stated that the Rockets' statistical model for prospects said that Jeremy Lin should have been drafted all the way inside of the top 20 and that his athleticism beat out that of every other prospect, but he still went undrafted. NBA teams had doubts about Lin's size and athleticism, 
and his lack of elite competition playing in the Ivy League. I love when players have these stories of success coming from unlikely basketball programs or just having to overcome a lot, period. Because to me, this makes their rise to success all the more sweet. And look, I'm not rooting for anybody to have to overcome a lot or have a tough journey. I'm just happy that these guys made it and their stories, they hit a little bit different. One of my favorite artists, J. Cole. One of my favorite songs from J. Cole, Last Call. There's this part where Cole talks about not making the basketball team. He says he could have quit. Some people quit, some go harder. He chose to go harder. He chose to get into a state where he was so good that the coach simply couldn't keep him off. And while Lynn not getting drafted may have been a minor roadblock in a long journey, things were just getting started. Lynn would be offered a spot on the Mavs Summer League team. Shout out Donnie Nelson. Years later, Lynn still speaks highly of Nelson, somebody that believed in him. A solid showing in the Summer League led to multiple offers from NBA teams. And Lynn? You guys may or may not know this, but Lynn was a warrior. That was actually his first team. As the first NBA player of Chinese slash Taiwanese descent, the Bay Area was buzzing. Keep in mind, this was a team with Steph Curry, Mata Ellis, and David Lee. Lynn's debut would receive a standing ovation. You see, Lynn, Lynn wasn't just playing for himself. Lynn's second season was tough. He would suffer a ligament injury during the NBA lockout. The Warriors, they would waive him. He would end up being signed by the Houston Rockets. What's up, Daryl Morey? To only play a few preseason minutes and be cut yet again. But Lynn would be picked up by the New York Knicks. After moving to this major mega market, the possibilities were now endless. Carmelo Anthony, Amari Stoudemire, Jeremy Lin. Melo in New York was enough. I mean, this guy was an absolute monster for the Knicks. Some people sleep on how good Prime Melo was, but boy, not me. A big time scorer and somebody that could go off on any given night at any given time. Oh yeah, and Amari Stoudemire, don't get me started. Those Knicks were good for the NBA. As it stands to this day, I think New York is one of the most unlucky teams in NBA history, but I got mad love for them. The first half of the season, Lynn would barely play. The team was in the midst of a two and 11 run with no BD and the veteran point guards on the Knicks struggling and Y was running low on options. Lynn was next up and Lynn's sanity was on the horizon. Against the New Jersey Nets, Lynn was just getting started. During halftime of that game, Carmelo Anthony suggested that D'Antoni let Lynn get more run in the second half. He delivered the victory and earned the post-game praise. But hey, forget the praise. What we cared about was the starting spot, and Lynn was there. He started the next game. With Lynn in the starting lineup, the Knicks ripped off seven straight games. The entire country took notice, not just the country, the world. Lynn's sanity was bigger than anything I had ever seen before. Lynn's 136 points in his first five starts were the most from any player since the NBA and ABA merger in 1976. Do you guys understand how long ago 1976 was? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was hooping. Pistol Pete, some absolute legends. The meta wasn't isolation, then a three-point ball. These guys were shooting hook shots. Hey, the hook shot's a great shot. These guys didn't even have a three-point line. They couldn't shoot the three ball if they even wanted to. But you guys get my point. Jeremy Lin had taken over NY. But of course, like I said, not just NY, the entire world. But hey, at least tickets were still cheap. $43 for the cheapest seat in the house. Oh wait, that was before Linsanity. During Linsanity, if you wanted a ticket to a Knicks game, you now had to pay 183 bucks. Business was booming, and so was Jeremy Lin. With the Lakers in town, Lin would drop 38. And if you, for some reason, still had not been paying attention, and now you were. He was creating his own shot, not just for himself, but for others. He was slashing, driving, attacking the basket at will. Lynn, he was a problem. The first team to slow down Lynn's sanity 
the big three Miami Heat, LeBron James, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade. One of the greatest players of all time, arguably one of the greatest shooting guards of all time, and a big, who in my opinion, should be a Hall of Famer. This team had dedicated their entire defense to stopping one undrafted kid from Harvard. Lynn called the experience flattering yet terrifying at the exact same time. Injuries would cut Jeremy Lynn's season surprisingly short, and to most of the surprise of the basketball world, the Knicks weren't able to retain Jeremy Lynn. The Rockets offered a notoriously interesting contract that the Knicks simply wouldn't match. Some say the trade for James Harden before the start of the season changed the entire trajectory of Jeremy Lin's career. Who knows exactly what would have happened if Lin had stayed in New York, if the trade for the beard doesn't happen, or if the Rockets simply did a better job of incorporating Lin for the long run. But hey, it's hard to complain. Lin's career has been an amazing one. He's broken countless stereotypes and became a world champion and he'll be recognized as such. The way I'm talking right now, you may think, hey, his career's over, right? Well, no. Lin is still balling in China, and he's doing big things. His impact goes far beyond the basketball court. And Jeremy Lin, he says he has one regret about Lin's sanity, and that's and that he didn't soak up every second. But I think we all know it'll never be forgotten. Sure to click the video on the screen right now, guys. It's incredibly dope. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. I'm Decoop, and I'm out.